having used Emacs for quite a while and also having been uh, be, uh, having been uh, an extensive user of VI for quite a while, I think that I have a, a good overview of what are the pros and the cons of using each one of them. And I do think that this is a matter of pros and cons and not necessarily a problem of which one of them is better. Because, uh, again, Emacs is a, is a great text editor, but uh, what you often see uh, is that it quite it quite quickly becomes not only a rabbit hole in the sense that once you start learning it, you essentially start living inside of it. And this is a valid point. Uh, it's not necessarily something that most people are willing to do, but it's also um, it's also one of the selling points, I guess, if you're someone that's really into technologies and if you're something that really likes to tinker with your setup, I think that uh, Emacs offers more in terms of that. And there are reasons for that. I think that, uh, first of all, what mainly... There are two two big aspects that differentiate Vim with regards to Emacs. The, the first one of them, I think, is the fact that uh, one of them is graphical and the other one is not. Now, of course, you have uh, ports such as GVim, but they are just that ports. They are not necessarily the. They are not necessarily taking, uh, making good use of the graphical capabilities. Because again, GVim does not add anything new with regards to Vim in terms of features. It's just Vim, but with uh, graphic fonts. So, while on the other hand, Emacs does have uh, does make a very good use of graphic tools, and one of the one of the most obvious things, I think, is the power line. And uh, if you use line, you probably know what power line is. Um, and you have an equivalent on Emacs. The difference being that on Emacs, it's extremely easy to install power line because again, it's just a little image. It's just a little, it's just a little image file that you download and that you set your, your Emacs to render essentially. While if you're using Vim, oh, you're going to be in for quite a walk if you want to install Powerline because again, this Powerline is kind of a hack to get that graphical feeling inside of him. And this just goes to show, I think, that uh, people do want that graphical that graphical sweetness inside their terminal and uh, they would go to enormous lengths to do that, such as installing those custom Powerline phones and uh, having a really hard time doing it. I remember that it was kind of a uh, kind of a hassle for me, and it most likely was for a lot of people. So there is this one aspect, which is uh, the graphical, which is the graphical features, I guess you can say, and uh, they are not the only ones. Uh, the the second one that I was going to talk about was the fact that um, Emacs is more extensible, in the sense that instead of uh, offering you a set of uh, scripting functions, it offers you an API of Lisp, Lisp functions. And if you ever wrote anything for Emacs, you know that Emacs uses Emacs Lisp, which is just a Lisp dialect. And uh, what that amounts to is essentially a general purpose programming language that's functional, I guess you can say that, in the sense that it's a functional programming language. So this is very interesting because again, this is a, I guess you can call it a Turing complete. Essentially, anything that you can write in regular Lisp, you can write in Emacs Lisp, which means that anything becomes possible in Emacs. And in fact, everything has been done in Emacs, more or less. You can, for example, use it to read your emails. You can use it to browse the web. You can use it. Uh, uh, you can use it to save for this thing that I'm showing right now, which is org mode. And again, there's just an infinitude of things that can be done. For example, in the field of uh, electrical engineering there I saw that there is the a P spice simulator for Emacs. So you can just install a package and you can run P spice, essentially simulate electric circuits. But there's also uh there's also a, a new chess port which is, which is essentially a chess engine. So you can play with a chess engine inside Emacs. You can play video games such as Tetris for example. This is one of the most famous and these are all in, in little packages called uh, the Emacs packages and they are all written in Lisp. So if you can imagine something that can be written in terms of software, it has already been done in Emacs. And if it hasn't, then it's just a matter of time because one day or another, again, someone's going to want that feature. Uh, when I used to work as an intern, I also used a lot of REST APIs and there is a package on Emacs that does exactly that, REST APIs. 
So you can make, a, for example, REST or HTTP calls, whatever you want to call them. And then you, in a text uh, with with a text and a JSON, for example, a JSON uh, payload, and then you just recover the output. So, Im so in the way Emacs incentivizes you to to bloat it because it wants you to install all those packages and to quite quite literally live inside it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, some people would argue that uh, this is not the Unix way. I guess you can say it. And what I mean by the Unix way is essentially have each program do one thing and do that one thing very well. And while there are merits to this approach, uh, this approach was built like a, some good 30 years ago and in a context that's, that's very different from the one we find today. I guess you can say that because we lived again in a time where compute computing power was uh, a lot more difficult difficult to come by and as a matter of fact we didn't even have say graphical terminals for example uh, or not in the way that we know them today at the very least which is why things such as ed and then ex which were old old as hell text editors came before it so in uh, so with regards to that, if you if you think about it again, most of the constraints that we lived with a few years ago do not apply anymore. And as a matter of fact, uh, in a simple in a simple desktop computer, we can find up to eight gigs of RAM, maybe even more, and i five CPUs and up and more than that. So the so if you're a desktop user, what I'm trying to say is. Uh, thinking about the Unix, uh, the Unix philo philosophy is not necessarily necessary, I guess you can say that. And because again, these are principles that do not apply anymore in most of the cases. Now, of course, if you are using, say, an em a little embed system, uh, embedded system somewhere where you have a really mi minimal Linux installation and you don't really have the space to install something like Emacs, of course, you're going to use VI or nano for that matter, it doesn't really matter. But as a desktop user, I find I find that um, the fact that Emacs can provide all of those um, all of those features and be infinitely extensible makes it a much more attractive text editor. And uh, yeah, so with regards to looking at them from a software point of view, I would say that Emacs is a much better editor because it's much more extensible. But looking at them from an editor point of view, I think that there are some phrases like, people usually quote that uh, Emacs is a great operating system without a good text editor. And I kind of find this true because um, editing text in Emacs is much harder than doing that in VI. And this is why there are packages such as a VI emulator for, for Emacs, which we call Evo mode. And uh, what Evo mode does is essentially making it so that Emacs can be the best of both worlds and that it allows you to use the same VI command. So you use HJKL to move around once in normal mode. And then you use say I, for example, to get into insert mode, put some text in. And uh, I think that this is the best approach because now what we have is uh, an editor that is um, that has all the extensibility of Emacs that uh, those Lisp functions that make it infinitely uh, extensible and Turing complete. But we also have uh, the, I will, uh, to me, the very least, the most natural exec uh, editing style. So this is something to take into consideration. If you use VI, at the very least, uh, do consider one day trying for, uh, trying for a brief moment, installing Emacs and uh, just playing around with Evo mode. Uh, I most likely am going to talk about this in the future, make a short video, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's worth a try. And there are also several good YouTube videos around that. I'm going to link them in the description as well as you, if you want more arguments on uh, how Emacs can, uh, can be more interesting than Vim in certain scenarios. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much covered it all. So thank you guys for for paying attention. Uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this. I hope you all have uh, learned something and I'll see you guys in a while.